What's up, YouTube? MR2. First thing I want to do is thank everybody for the donations that we got for the camera. The uh, donations totaled about $350, and, and I found this camera, which I'm not going to show on here for copyright reasons. I will post a link to it, but we found it for $255, and, and of course, you can go look them up. They're kind of new, not as big as you think they are. They're actually quite small, but no less, they do their purpose. It's, the resolution isn't as good as, uh, you know, high definition, but nonetheless, it still does its purpose. And here we we'll to look at, make sure everybody understands, in case you know, you might have missed something. Here we have a hydrogen fuel cell that is, uh, Nothing but, you know, water and electric current, you know, 12 volt DC automotive current in water produces hydrogen and oxygen. And, you know, it just comes right out. I just capture this in a, in a balloon. And as we capture this gas, The, the electricity is splitting this gas from water into hydrogen and oxygen. Just that simple as we speak. And then I just set them here and ignite them. And all it takes is a spark. And uh, if you look into the chemistry of it, when that happens, when a spark comes in contact with that, those two elements fuse themselves together to form a molecule of water again. So this is, and you can look into hydrogen fuel cell technology, and, and this is what they refer to as cold fusion. The amount of energy released when these two elements go back together is, is well, astronomical. In fact, a gallon of seawater contains 30 times the amount of energy as a gallon of gasoline. So, I mean, next time you see a gallon of seawater, you imagine 30 gallons of gasoline. That, that's equal. So, I mean, the, the supply of energy we have on this planet is, is uh, pretty much endless because it's constantly supplied by the sun. So what we'll do, is in, and right here you'll see I had to had trouble with the camera moving on me so I had to uh, come up with some things here to keep the camera from moving I actually even screwed that thing down to the table so it wouldn't move and you'll see in the videos that uh what the problem what the problem is and so let's go over here and take a look at some of these and uh let's see here all right I got some video lined up here that we're gonna run this about five minutes worth and we'll go through some of it and then of course I'll run the whole thing unedited at the end you know just put it at the end of the video at any rate it starts out we still see those same anomalies with the uh, the light before the balloon pops I, I would suggest an EMP of some sort some sort of electromagnetic pulse starts before the uh, the eruption but at any rate, you can see it, it's awesome. I mean, the way the, the the plasma, the flame, goes vortexually. As you see, this this like a wobble. You see the the wood block kind of wobbling back and forth. That's because of the air in the room vibrating or reverberating, and that's causing some of these particles to move back and forth. Some of, I mean, you can still see them there. These are, I mean, these are charged particles that are that are turning into water. This is what you're watching. You know, this is what this is. And these charged particles, they don't, they they behave exactly like a cosmic ray, or what NASA explains as a cosmic ray. And when you go and look at uh, some of this stuff. You actually go and look at at Soho and you see 
the same, you know, when the sun's, you know, when it's blocked out, you can see the same the plasma vortexes, and, and then when a large coronal mass ejection comes this way, you see the same cosmic patterns in the sky, and they're, they're every direction and which way, and, and you got to remember this is just every 12 minutes as a photograph. And you can see these things are splitting too and doing the same thing as, as this is in, in our uh, in our video. With a it's truly remarkable that this amount of energy just sitting in the in the oceans, three quarters of the planet's made of highly flammable gas and all it takes is an extra amount of current to to split that gas or that 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 water back into gas the thing about all this is the the uh, you know I don't know everything about physics but the quantum standard model you know breaks down at this point where where the electric universe model picks right up and and explains you know quite a bit of this just by what what we're saying here is 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 it's a, it's a molecular energy not nuclear you don't have to go there we don't have to go nowhere near that this is taking place right in front of you know right in the same room that the water is just vapor but it's bonding back together and turned to vapor in, in the atmosphere in this room I mean this is what chemistry tells you this is what's happening here and without a doubt you see it with your own eyes and, and again well the same thing happens when with the uh, when you look at the balloon in the sink the static charge that draws the water towards it in fact, you know, here's some NASA video shows a knitting needle, which is plastic, and when it's rubbed with a piece of paper, it builds up a charge, and water, beads of water will actually, well, you see, they orbit around it. This is taken out in space. I'll post this link. So there's, you know, you can look at it either way you want, you know. They still say gravity is one thing and, and this electric charge is another. Yet, you know, it is what it is. So here you go, I'll run this video. We let it run out. We learn more, we'll post it. Show sure gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna do some more with the uh, tinted glass and some welding lenses and see what we can come up with as far as blocking out the you know, maybe put a disc in front or something, see what happens. At any rate, that's where we're at. Peace and love. Heads up.